Good afternoon. And welcome everyone to the February, I can't believe it's February, uh, town board meeting. And uh, if everyone would please stand, we will uh, start with the Pledge of Allegiance. And uh, I would like to ask Thank you. Well, February is National Black History Month, an opportunity for all of us to celebrate and acknowledge the many contributions of our diverse neighbors, volunteers, and professionals who help to enrich our town every day. Uh, with COVID, we haven't had this for a couple of years, so it's great to be back doing this again. And to help us share in the celebration, I'd like to take a moment to highlight a few of the outstanding community members that we have here in the audience today. And uh, we will begin with Councilman O'Connor, and uh, he will bring up his honoree. Councilman? NYPD Officer Christian Brown has been dedicated to protecting and serving our community for over 10 years. He began his service in the emergency response field as a U-Squad member of the Exchange Ambulance of the Islip in 2009. Upon joining the Senior Corps in 2014, Christian rapidly rose through the ranks of the Exchange Ambulance, serving as an EMT, Captain, Assistant Chief, and in 2022, served as chief of the department. Christian has shown the utmost dedication and commitment to providing the best care possible to the residents of our community, as well as advancing the capabilities and services provided by Exchange Ambulance. Since becoming a member in 2014, Christian has performed 6,619 hours worth of shifts on duty and responded to nearly 3,400 calls as part of the uh, nomination form that we submitted, one of Christian's colleagues at the uh, uh, Exchange Ambulance had a glowing uh, recommendation of him and said we couldn't have found a better honoree. So thank you to Ms. Tatum and for those remarks. And uh, Christian, come, why don't you come join us and, and receive your recognition. You know, so many times we hear about volunteers making a difference in people's lives. Uh, Christian certainly epitomizes that and has probably saved many. So we really, really thank you. Um, is Jackie here? All right, so we will go to the next honoree, and hopefully um, Councilman Guadron's honoree will arrive. But if not, we'll come up and talk about it. Okay, so we will move then to um, our next honoree, who is Wilney Amy Evans. Amy? <laughs> Amy bought her fan club and her cheering <laughs> section, but you're going to understand why, and anybody who's met Amy will understand why. Her, her enthusiasm and her love for what she does just oozes. It's, it's wonderful. Amy serves our community as community organizer for Youth Enrichment Services, which we all know as YES. And since 2009, Amy has overseen the day-to-day -day operations of YES programming, 
and has continued to grow programming to fit the needs of the community. Amy has coordinated with outside resources and support systems to generate larger community engagement through education, volunteerism, and nutrition, and has put to work her extensive knowledge of adolescent development, complex family dynamic dynamics, and we know how sometimes family dynamics can be very complex, <laughs> conflict resolutions, and community resources to ensure all youth in YES programming continue to have the foundation of support that they need. That foundation gives them the opportunity to flourish as they go forward. Amy has truly been an invaluable component of youth enrichment services and instrumental of its ongoing success of operations these many, many years. So please join all of us here at the town board in congratulating Amy Evans. Amy, come forward. Good afternoon, everyone. Buenas tardes, tengan todos. Well, we talk, uh, this is, uh, I know that Jackie is on her way here, but we got to, con we got to continue. So uh, anybody from the family uh, is here? Okay, thank you very much for being here. Uh, retiring YPD officer Jacqueline Merriweather has made it her mission to identify and implement positive change through community outreach. Since 2000, Jackie has been an avid member of the Brentwood Rotary Club and currently serves as a Rotary President and on the Executive Board of the Rotary Youth Leadership Award. Through her involvement with the Brentwood Rotary, Jackie has organized Christmas and Thanksgiving donation drives, school supply drives, food drives, and has sponsored life-saving surgeries through the Rotary Gift of Life Initiative. I, and I have to mention that she also uh, just uh, had a blood drive recently, about uh, you know last week. Uh, so uh, it is something to really men uh, you know it's, it's worth it to be to mention. Um, Jackie is actively involved with the Brentwood Union Free School District and serves on the Parent Advisory Board. So please join us in recognizing Jacqueline Merriweather, even though she's not here, I wish that a family member would be here. <laughs> and thank you. So right here. Did you want to, all right, why don't you take it? Hopefully, hopefully she's on her way. And 
when, when Councilman Guadron uh, said that she was an active uh, member of Rotary, uh, she's just so infectious. She so lives and breathes Rotary. She's done a, a marvelous, marvelous job. So again, congratulations to all of our honorees, and thank you for your hard work, each and every one of you, for all you do to enrich our community day after day. We are so proud of, of all of the hard work that you do, along with your dedicated, hardworking neighbors, and proud to recognize Black History Month uh, this, this month in the town of Islip, and encourage all to celebrate our diverse neighbors each and every month throughout the year. So we have a few announcements. Uh, February is also Heart Health Month, representing an opportunity for all of us to focus on their cardiovascular health. Uh, heart disease is the number one killer of men and women, and with women, it, ki it actually kills more women than uh, breast cancer does. Last week, town employees and members of the town board joined together wearing red in recognition of National Wear Red Day to help raise that awareness. So um, let this moment serve as a reminder just how important it is to take care of ourselves. So as we kick off 2023, we're encouraging all of you to speak with your physician. And Jackie is here. Awesome. So we'll take a little break in the announcements and ask the town board to come up and formally present you with your uh, plaque and your flag. So speaking about heart, love is in the air this February, literally, in conjunction with our Long Island MacArthur Airport and Breeze Airlines, we are sending one lucky couple on a free flight to Charleston, South Carolina. So in order to enter, the newlyweds must have been married here at Town Hall during the month of February. And the couples need to send along a photo, a brief note about their significant other and email it to us at uh, Islip Town Media at islipny.gov. And the winners will be drawn on Monday, February 27th at the airport. So if you know a happy couple who's planning on tying the knot or thinking about it, have them do it here at Town Hall during the month of February. Um, and we will be able to send two lovebirds on a flight to Charleston. Uh, also, you can help spread the love this month to our friends with uh, the Islip Animal Shelter and the Adopt a Pet Center. We're running an Adopt a Valentine, Give a Valentine promotion, Tuesday, February 14th through Tuesday the 21st. So anyone, uh, any animals that are adopted during that event, uh, another animal at the shelter will be given a new toy to play with. Each lucky new pet owner will also walk away with a box of chocolates in addition to their new furry friend. There are so many lovable animals at our shelter waiting for their forever home. Very tempting when you go there. Um, and also in February, we have PS I Love You Day, 
This is Friday, February 10th, and it's a time to reflect, check in on your loved ones, and help shine a light on mental health awareness. This uh, initiative was started by a young woman, um, Brooke De Palma, who lost her dad to suicide. So over the last decade, PS I Love You Day campaign has grown to include over 335 schools, businesses, and communities across the nation. So we ask everyone to join our community on Friday the 10th by wearing purple, um, no matter where you are, and help spread the word to those who may be struggling with those mental health challenges. Help is always available. And uh, for more information, you can check PSILoveYouDay.net. And uh, to Brooke and all of her family, um, she has shown a tremendous amount of, of courage these past years. And it's called PS I Love You Day because the last words her dad said to her was, I love you. So on that note, I want to thank everyone for their attention. Uh, again, congratulate our honorees for Black History Month, and we will go to the meeting. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, seven scheduled public hearings for the board's consideration. I'd ask the town clerk to please read the first hearing notice. Today's first hearing is to consider amending Islip Town Code, Chapter 6A, Article 3, entitled Community Preservation and Anti-Blight Enforcement. Any questions? If there are no cards, uh, I'll entertain a motion. All right, we have a motion to close the public hearing and adopt a uh, motion by Councilman Lorenzo, second by Councilman Cochran. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approved. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you would please read the second hearing notice. Yes, hearing number two is to consider amending Islip Town Code, Chapter 32, entitled Littering. And if everyone would remember, this was the uh, situation that was brought to our attention by that student from Brentwood High School. Um, no uh, questions, comments on this? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion. Motion, motion by Councilman Guadron, second by Councilman Cochran. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It is approved. Uh, we'll move then to the third hearing notice. The third he hearing is to consider a one-year contract with Bayshore Brightwaters Rescue Ambulance services to the residents of the district. Any questions? You hearing none, motion? We have a motion to close the hearing and approve by Councilman Cochran, second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, it is approved. We'll move then, if you would read the fourth hearing notice, please. Number four is to consider entering into an agreement with Exchange Ambulance Corporation of the Islips for their services for 2023. Uh, we do have someone who signed up to speak on that hearing, uh, Greg. Okay, so we have uh, number four then. Any other questions or comments on four? Make a motion to close the public hearing and offer the resolution for its adoption. Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Guardone. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. 
Uh, we will move then to the hearing for uh, number five, Madam Clerk. Uh, number five, to consider a one-year contract with Community Ambulance Company, Inc. to provide emergency ambulance services to the residents of the district. Okay, um, Greg, you wanted to speak on that? Uh, Greg Isaac, resident. Uh, I'm bringing forward, uh, actually I submitted to the board, uh, an agreement that was signed on January 6, 2023, between the town of Islip, the community ambulance company uh, of Sable. I'd just like to know if this was already signed, what, what, are, we, what are we doing now? What, what's this new contract all about? Is it amending this contract? Because it was signed and notarized uh, like I said, in January, on the sixth day of January, 2023, by the supervisor. So, um, that's why I just want to bring that to your attention. Thank you, sir. Th thank you. Uh, there are no other comments. Um, Mr. Town Attorney, do you want to just give a brief what we're doing here? Because I think it's pretty self-explanatory. It's a one-year contract with Community Ambulance, correct? Okay to provide emergency ambulance service to the residents of that district, correct? Yes, we do have that agreement. Okay. Um, are there any questions or comments? Then I'll entertain a motion. Is there a motion? Sure, oh. motion to close the public hearing, offer a resolution, take the ballot. Thank you, a uh, motion by Councilman O'Connor, second. Lorenzo. Second by Councilman uh, Lorenzo, all those in favor, opposed. Uh, that is four in favor, one refusal. The motion is adopted. Madam Clerk, if you would please read the hearing notice for public hearing number six. Number six is to consider a one-year contract with Central Islip Hopog Volunteer Ambulance, Inc. to provide emergency ambulance services to the residents of the district. Um, Gray, you signed to speak on number six also? No? Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions or comments on number six? Hearing next six, hearing none, motion. Motion to close the public hearing, I'd like to second. Thank you, we have a motion by Councilman Guadron, second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor, Aye. opposed, it is approved. It takes us to public hearing number seven, Madam Clerk. Yes, the last hearing is to consider entering into an agreement with the Brentwood Legion Ambulance Services, Inc. for their services for 2023. Are there any questions? Hearing none, motion. Motion to close the public hearing, I'd like to approve. We have a motion by Councilman Guadron, second. By Councilman Lorenzo, all those in favor? Opposed, we have four in favor, one recusal. The motion is adopted. That then concludes our public hearings for consideration. Um, at this time, we will move to the uh, public portion. And we do have a number of cards. Just to remind everyone, you have, oh, you have three uh, minutes to, uh, to speak. Um, first speaker is Jim Schlau. And again, this is not a question and answer, but if you have some specific issues, most of the commissioners are here. I'll be happy to uh, go out into the hall with you and help as best they can with your uh, issues. Jim Slough, resident since 1968. I uh, just want to shift gears for a second. Um, I saw a program on your channel last night. It must have been three in the morning. Uh, very well done. It was, uh, I don't know if the guy was a Sikh or a Muslim. Did a chant, it sounded like to me. And uh, you had another you had a, it was almost like the League of Nations or something of uh, religious people. I didn't see the whole thing. I'll try to catch it. And uh, Kelly, I recognized the face. And you sang along. Very good. Round of applause for you. Very good job. Thank you. That was a good program. Very well done. Very well received. Are these comments being recorded? Because this is really delightful. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate it. Well, it was well done. Uh, just stop that timer for a minute. I just wanted to... Just for a point of clarification, Mr. Schlau was talking about the first Unity Council 
event that we had at Town Hall West on January 27th, which co coincidentally happened to be um, Holocaust uh, Remembrance Day. But we had various religious denominations and leaders of the community to really speak to the issue of unity and that we are one community and we need to be working together and a lot less acrimony. And uh, it was like not quite an hour, but the goal was that hopefully everyone walked out of there feeling better than they did when they walked in. And to a person, uh, the feedback we got was really extraordinary. The entire town board participated and uh, actually Councilman Guadron did some translation services for us and uh, all of that participation was much appreciated. So Mr. Schlau, you may continue. I got some pictures. You know, I could come in here with a stack of pictures as big as the omnibus, omnibus bill. Boy, with that Biden kid. I, this town is going to heck. You gotta try to do something about this stuff. You know, you got rules here. I got them, I read them, I look at them. There are things you could do that you say you can't do. You say it takes time. Some of this stuff has been around for a long time. I think that you should stop worrying about expanding Central Isop and building all these houses along Carlton Avenue. I know nobody's going to listen to that, but the traffic is impossible, and those houses aren't even opened yet, all those apartments. Uh, there's too many people in, in this town. You, you stop. You, you, you got to stop this building. Who, who wants this airport? You know, who needs it? You know, are we going to be Queens? You know, I remember when I was a kid living in Queens, and they didn't have the, all the uh, overpasses and everything yet. We're going to have to elevate the railroad before you know it. This is going to be an extension of New York City. Now, some of those pitches there are rectified. Some things were done. So I'm pointing that out. It's not much, but it's something. It's in a positive direction. But you've got a lot of cars on these sidewalks all over the place. And I don't know why public safety can't go out and do something about it, really. You know, you had somebody in here going out here on a walker. That was me back in the 80s when I had a tumor re removed. That's why I'm so sensitive to it. Plus, I was going to have my leg amputated not that long ago because I got bit by a brown recluse. So I think that you should keep these sidewalks clear. And uh, get on those, get on those uh, complaints I put in. Some of them are festering and, I, and, and people are, you know, they're noticing who I am and, uh, you know, it's, it's getting a little sticky. Especially that thing over there. You know, I don't know what's going on with that property. I think Jacob or Jason, he called me that something was going on and that there's a house there with no address. You got all kinds of equipment in that, in that yard fenced in. Thank you, Mr. Schlau, and I'm glad you noticed that we have been able to rectify some things, but everything takes time. There's a process that we have to follow, and public safety has been very, very diligent. And in the budget for this year, the town recognized the need for more code enforcement, more public safety, and we are going to be hiring more park ranges. But again, it all takes a process. We have to deal with the county civil service department, and that in itself is a chore, but we are working towards it. Thank you. Next speaker, Lark Schlimbaum. Good afternoon, Madam Supervisor, members of the town board, and other ISIP representatives. My name is Lark Schlimbaum. I reside at Nine Colonial Court in Bay Shore, and I am here to present to you a petition under New York State Town Law, Section 265, which, as I'm sure you know, regulates the number of votes required for approval of a change of zone application. The change of zone application addressed is by Sunrise Development, INC, which requests that the zoning of 26 South Saxon Avenue in Bay Shore be changed from residence AAA to residence C so that Sunrise may construct a business and commercial use in the form of a 90-unit assisted living facility and memory care community. The surrounding residential community has been opposing this use for almost four years, and last September, the planning board adopted a resolution recommending that the change of zone application be denied. Uh, the applicant now has a new attorney who has requested a hearing before the town board. Under town law section 265, <coughs> a simple majority of the town board is necessary to approve a change of zone unless a petition as described in the statute is presented to the town board. 
In that instance, the majority is insufficient and a supermajority is necessary for approval. Um, I have a petition to be read to you. Uh, I believe this petition uh, complies with the statute. It consists of 20 pages. Uh, the tax map numbers have been added to each page to assist in its review. Uh, I do request that if there are any problems with the petition, that we be allowed to discover that so that they could be corrected and uh, action taken if necessary. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. Next speaker, John D. Leonardo. Hi. My name is John D. Leonardo. I am an anthrozoologist and the president of UMaine Long Island. Since I, the last time I was here, you brought sloth encounters to court for a temporary restraining order. For that, I thank you. Now, more must be done. A TRO is useless if it is not in force. Sloth Encounters has not only blatantly violated the town's restraining order by continuing to operate unlawfully in Hopog, but its owner, Larry Wallach, has used this location as a base for other illegal activities in and beyond Islip, such as illegally exhibiting sloths at homes in Ronkonkoma, Brentwood, and New York City, and at restaurants and businesses in Long Beach, Hempstead, and Oyster Bay. Even the Suffolk County Legislature has taken notice, introducing a bill to restrict traveling exotic animal acts like his in the county. Sloth Encounters has also dramatically expanded its business at the Hop Hog location, now selling sloths as well as advertising for sale porcupines, armadillos, foxes, tarantulas, pythons, and much more, many of whom carry diseases and are also illegal in the township of Islip. According to his social media postings, Larry Wallach has also acquired yet another baby sloth. In addition to these new animals, Sloth Encounters has also acquired several new USDA violations since I last appeared before you. Wallach was twice cited for critical violations of the Animal Welfare Act, including for lying to USDA inspectors regarding an incident involving a sloth biting a child at his hot dog facility, and for mishandling animals in a way that's dangerous to the public and animal welfare. Despite that inspection report reading that Wallach must ensure there is sufficient distance and or barriers between animals and members of the public whenever encounters with the animals are conducted, Wallach continues to put sloths into dangerously close contact with the public, even striking them and purposely agitating them before leaving them unattended with patrons. A second newly released USDA inspection report cited Wallach for violating the Animal Welfare Act after he failed to show a veterinary care plan for a baby sloth and told inspectors that the sloths stay at his brother or girlfriend's house when the facility is closed. When in fact, he was harboring them at a Best Western Hotel in Rockville Center, a location he has since been asked to vacate for violating Best Western policies by harboring the sloth. Wallach is a public menace with more than 50 violations on his record and who is on video striking and electroshocking baby animals. He has also threatened me and physically assaulted me outside of his hot dog business. Please do not let Wallach make a mockery of Islip Town Code and of the Suffolk County Supreme Court. Please bring Wallach back to court for contempt. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Kristen, uh, Christine, I'm sorry, Mio, Mio Eli or Michelli? Okay, sorry. That C got kind of Looking like I know. to be bothered by humans. They are nocturnal. They don't want to be going out during the day. That's not their natural um, way of living their lives. And they certainly don't want to be going house to house and being handled. Um, as far as him getting other animals and selling them to the public, animals should not be exploited. Wild animals. They're wild for a reason. They live in the wild for a reason. 
Um, as a rehabber, I go and obviously rescue these animals, I treat these animals, um, and so on. When people who are not knowledgeable enough to own these animals come to possess these animals, it either turns out dangerous for the owner, for the animal, for the public once they decide, I can't handle this, and the animal is set free. He's just encouraging this kind of behavior. And it's, again, it's joining these animals. To allow him to stay in Islip is just almost embarrassing, um, considering he's been actually to other townships because of things that he has done. I just hope that Islip does decide to enforce it, make it actually happen, and we can have to leave here and hopefully never do this again here or anywhere else. Thank you. <coughs> Next speaker, Pat. <coughs> Pat, Islip Town. I'm here today to correct last month's debacle made by this town board. I never mentioned vacancy. Your guilt did. I specifically mentioned New York Consolidated Town Law 81 and 85, which clearly states the town board may, upon its own motion, shall, or a petition, submit to, for a special town election proposition for the ward system. Towns containing a population of more than 10,000 are considered first class towns, which Islip is. You are able to establish or abolish the ward system for election of councilmen in those towns. Remember in 20, 20, 2002 and 2006, Republicans at that time for council districts put it up for vote. They wanted the residents to decide. They did not want to waste the taxpayers' money for something they have every right to vote for and should. And after a ward system shall have been so established, the term of every town councilman terminates. So my point was, before it was so rudely twisted, this board deliberately denied the residents that right. Instead, you handpicked this board that of whom would operate illegally. Because right now, there are over 20 criminals the board has approved to infiltrate into this town, all associates of you, Ms. Carpenter, which also include felons, and that is a fact. Now, for those of you that are unfamiliar to my actions that were brought to light by a previous town worker, this town worker was here for many years. He became disturbed by what was taking place. Unfortunately, one day this man was taken to the hospital, diagnosed with cancer. They had to amputate his ear. While trying to recover, you, Ms. Carpenter, had your close friend, indicted worker, at the time Commissioner of Public Safety, Mr. Carney. You called, he called him, and fired him while in his hospital bed. Unfortunately, the man has died, believe it or not, from cancer, but I believe a broken heart. And the kicker, Mr. Carney lied about his residence. You made him deputy supervisor knowing he did not live here. He had resigned from it after it was brought out, but not fired. You let him keep his job as commissioner of public safety, then he was indicted for taking bribes and threatening job applicants for jobs at the town with four felonies, 12 misdemeanors, Thank you, Pat. four counts of misconduct, and coercion. Thank you. Next speaker, Greg. Greg Islip, resident. At last month's board meeting, and what I uh, submitted to the board, uh, to the council, is the uh, contract agreements for the uh, 
exchange ambulance and also central ISA Pop Park ambulance districts. Uh, as I stated last month that the people in the central ISA Pop Park district are being treated differently than the ones elsewhere, especially in the exchange ambulance district when it comes to co-payments and co-insurance because Central ISA, from when they first initiated the billing back in 2019 and up until 2022 of December 31st, the uh, supervisor initialed to waive those obligations of paying a co-payment or co-insurance. The town assumed that obligation to pay. So that's the Central ISA Hot Pox Ambulance District residents were treated in that fashion. When you move over to the exchange ambulance, the only provision that was initialed was the 2022 contract agreement. Previous 2020 and 2021 contract years, the, there was no initialing of that provision. So why is there a double standard when it's coming to uh, these ambulance charges uh, upon the residents? Uh, it seems like it's a discriminatory practice what went on here. And I, didn't even, I don't think I'm gonna have the time, but also, the Brentwood Legion, there's two years where you initiate uh, initialed those that provision, and on the Brightwaters Bayshore, it's two years. So where Exchange Ambulance is refunding the 22 year because of the contract agreement, I, I believe that the other ambulance companies should do the same for those residents as well. And also, I believe that the Exchange Ambulance should be, uh, you know, refunding the monies from 2020 to 2021 in those two years because as you stated in December that these bills should have been ignored that the residents should have not been uh, obligated to pay for the co-payments so if that's the fact then uh, I believe the refund should be given back in full and uh, thank you for your time thank you uh, next speaker Ron Ronald Vars to speak on two items this afternoon that were mentioned at the last uh, meeting. I'm a 53-year resident of the town of Isaac, 46-year member of the fire and EMS service. First topic I heard in the video of how the town taxes have doubled in the past year. I would like to <coughs> excuse me, dispute this comment. My tax bill from 1996 to 1997 my school tax was $1,815.10. My police tax was $499.14. My garbage tax was $315. I'm sorry, $352. Yet my general tax was $264. Let's jump to 2023. My school tax now is $3,975. My police tax is $1,261.26. My garbage tax is $528.40, yet my general town tax is only $369.25. So in 27 years, it's only gone up a dollar, $105. I would like to tell a person to check his tax, tax bills and not listen to his neighbors. Some taxes have doubled and others have tripled, as I have stated above, while the general town tax has only gone up a hundred. Second statement, the charge that on the ambulance calls. This bill, I should say, this charge was a mistake stated in an earlier board meeting by the member of the ambulance corps that charged a co-payment for their services. This was a mistake by the ambulance corps, and they would be refunding the co-payment to the people that had been charged. This law that came in had nothing to do, to do with the ambulance corps. They were allowed to bill the last two years. This bill was put in by New York State for fire departments that can charge for their ambulance service. It is called a self, <coughs> excuse me, a soft billing. If you have insurance or Medicare, the bill will be paid. If you have no form of paying this bill, you do not have to pay it. So it is called soft billing. I hope this will correct the false statements made at an earlier meeting 
my earliest speeches. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Boris. Uh, next speaker, Debbie Puccio. So I'm going to speak on this slide again. I don't know that I could say much more than what John has said, but here we are so many months later and we're still discussing Larry uh, Wallach, who continues to operate his business despite his code violations, USDA citations, Supreme Court restraining orders. In addition to these orders to cease, he's now selling slops, which I know John had mentioned. I'm um, aware that the board maybe doesn't have as much interest in promoting anim animal rights, but one would think that you have an interest in the people adhering to the laws that are set in place, as well as uh, the bylaws and um, zones, zoning, and as well as um, it is just adhering to the town laws. Um, the fact that he is still operating, he's making a mockery out of the town and anything that he's been ordered to do. Basically, we need to live in law and order and to adhere to what's been directed to him, as anybody should. And that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you, uh, Debbie. Okay. Um, I, I just want to say you made one statement that was a little bit disturbing that uh, you suggested that the town board might not be sensitive to animal rights, and I think that is certainly a mischaracterization. We are very sensitive to animal rights. We operate an animal and adopt a pet center and have made tremendous investment, have built a brand new animal shelter, so this town board really does care about animals. Uh, and to the point of him making a mockery of the law, uh, our fire marshals, our code enforcement officers, our public safety commissioner, deputy commissioner, are very much aware of what's going on and are monitoring the situation, but we can only do what the law allows. Now, he's changed the nature of his business to a pet store, and the county is allowing him to have some of those animals, from what I've been told and we can only operate under what the law gives us and what the county sets forward. So we're on it. Thank you for coming down. Next speaker, Lynn Mannheim. My name is Lynn Mannheim. I'm a resident of Whitestone, Queens, where Larry Wallach was recently domiciled after apparently being made to leave the Best Western Hotel in Rockville Center. The hotel had discovered that Wallach was hiding baby sloths from the federal inspectors on the premises and against hotel policies. They probably didn't have a special clause about harboring baby sloths, but still, against hotel policies. Larry Wallach is not only continuing to operate sloth encounters unlawfully and in violation of a Suffolk County Supreme Court temporary restraining order, but he's now using Islip as a base of operations to expand his illegal activity into New York City, where sloths are explicitly banned by New York City, New York City Health Code 161. Pictures posted on Wallach's own social media accounts show him illegally exhibiting sloths in New York City and on his own website where he falsely advertises sloths as legal pets in New York City. A video posted only days ago documents Wallach attempting to sell the sloths to New York City residents as well. Please, pr please protect these sloths as well as the integrity of Islip and New York City codes by bringing sloth encounters back to court for contempt. Thank you, and I'm glad to hear that this town cares about animal welfare. Thank you. Uh, next speaker, Joe Fritz. Members of the board and Supervisor Carpenter, before my statement, I wish to bring to your attention that I did call the Central Islip School District relative to the acquisition by them of Robbins Hall. However, I wish to 
informed the board that Robbins Hall was not conveyed to the Central Isaac School District. They called me back and they informed me that they do not own Robbins Hall. They informed me that they received property on Eastgate Drive. The school district received the land in Eastgate Drive. It may be worthwhile to see what can be done to purchase it or have it gifted to the town to be used as a senior center and youth center. I'm now speaking to laud you on your unwillingness to have the town of Isop flooded like Queens by new construction. I disagree with Governor Hochul because Long Island is bursting at the seams. There is a constant construction that further causes our hamlets to resemble more crowded towns to the west. Islip Town went in the other direction by a verbally opposing mega drain. Fine. But let's not forget that this same board approved the construction of 9,100 apartments and mega business growth on 450 acres in Brentwood. Yes, you started with the approval of 3,000 apartments with a second look later. Judging by your past performance, though, I would like to think that the balance would shift, but history has not been kind to Brentwood residents and the town's vision. Were it not for my diligence and the resources of the Brentwood School District, this project would be underway. A lawsuit has so far present, prevented this. This project would have been started and an opportunity for open space squandered. It's time to have Islip government take steps to correct its errors by taking steps to make the Walkoff property part of the Oak Rush Plains Preserve. And by the way, it's time that Islip Town also consider obtaining Robbins Hall for the Central Islip residents. It is a show place. It, 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 there's a tremendous amount of discussion about the $10 million. This would be ideal. And I know that the builders over there are going to be requesting IDA tax reductions so it would be a good quid pro quo, as it stated earlier, uh, last, the last time we met at the board. I'd like to thank the board and wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Mr. No Birch. Support, no support Brentwood resident. All right, that uh, are all the cards that we have. Motion to close the public hearing, please. Motion, Motion by Councilman Cochran, second. By Councilman Lorenzo, all those in favor, opposed. The public portion is closed. We will move now to the agenda. Uh, the first item on the agenda being the meeting of the Town of Isop Industrial Development Agency. Uh, I'll ask for a motion to convene motion. this board by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor opposed. A quorum is, con I mean, a quorum is present. The meeting is convened. John. Madam Chair, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Members of the agency board, John Walzer, Executive Director, 40 Nassau Avenue, Islip. I have several items for your consideration today. The first item is to approve the mi uh, minutes from our recent board meeting on January 24th. We have a motion to approve the minutes by Councilman Cochran, second by Councilman Guardone. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. The it next is item. approved. Thank you. The next item for your consideration is an authorizing resolution for a project we induced at last month's meeting. Uh, Big Geyser Incorporated at 111 Wilshire Boulevard in Edgewood. Uh, this is an expansion of a beverage company, including a relocation of their corporate headquarters from Queens. Any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman Guadron. Second. Second. By Councilman Cochran. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. I think the next item is also an authorizing resolution of a project induced last month. Uh, positive promotions located at 15 Gilpin Avenue in Hop Hog. Uh, this is an expansion of a manufacturer of promotional items and printed and customized uh, gift products. Any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman Guadron. Second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approved. And the last item I have for your consideration is an amended authorizing resolution uh, for Eastview Apartment Development. Uh, this is to authorize a, um, an increase in mortgage financing. Are there any questions? Motion? Motion by Councilman Cochran, second. second. By Councilman Guardone, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed, approved. Uh, any other business, John? Nothing else. Hearing none, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. By Councilman O'Connor, second. By Councilman Guardone, all those in favor? Opposed, we stand adjourned. Thank you. Uh, next are the cleanup resolutions. Jeff. <coughs> 
Madam Supervisor, members of the town board, and the town clerk. York, excuse me. Uh, I have only one matter on for your consideration here today, and that is to board up and clean up the premises located at 1393 Boston Avenue in Bayshore on this vacant and unsecured property that now exists unsecured accessory structures, high grass, overgrown vegetation, and litter and debris, which constitutes a nuisance and presents a fire safety and health hazard. Notice of this hearing is provided to all known persons with the property interest in this premises. Are there any questions? Motion by Councilman Cochran, second, second. by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor? Opposed? It is approved. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, we will move now to item three, are the appropriation transfers. Are there any questions? Motion? Motion, Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second. second, by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Item four, authorization for the supervisor to enter into one year Extension agreement with PKF O'Connor Davies, the accounting firm. Any questions? Motion? Motion, Motion by Councilman Guadron. Second. By Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Opposed? We have four in favor, one recusal. The motion is adopted. Item five, authorization for the town clerk to advertise for a public hearing to consider amending Islip Town Uniform Traffic Code. I'll make that motion. Second by Councilman Cochran, all those in favor, opposed, approved. Next, authorization of the town clerk to advertise for a public hearing to consider amending chapter 68 of the Islip Town Code entitled Zoning. I'll make that motion, second, second. by Councilman O'Connor, all those in favor, opposed, approved. Next is an authorization of the town clerk to advertise for a public hearing to consider enacting Local Law 2 of 2023, amending Local Law 3 of 1989, Islip Town Code chapter 68, 68-325. Motion by Councilman Cochran, second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor? Opposed? It is approved. Next is an authorization for the supervisor to execute any and all documentation with USACE, DEC, or any other authorities for the dredging of Homans Creek. Uh, any questions? Motion. Motion by Councilman Guadron, second by Councilman Cochran. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, it is approved. Uh, item nine, authorization for the supervisor to request and accept funds from National Grid to compensate the Department of Public Works with the paving restoration of various roads for the 2022 Bayshore Main replacement project. Any questions? Motion by Councilman Cochran, second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor? Opposed, approved. Uh, item 10, authorization to supervisor to request and accept funds from National Grid for paving restoration in Islip Terrace. Motion, Motion. by Councilman O'Connor, second. By Councilman Lorenzo, all those in favor? Second. Opposed, approved. 11, authorization to supervise execute any and all documentation for several projects using a portion of the ARPA funds. Any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman Cochran, second. second. By Councilman Guadron, all those in favor? Second. Opposed, approved. 12 is the authorization to supervise to enter various agreements for programs or events to be held throughout the town of Islip. So we're starting with uh, a lot of uh, good programs for kids and adults too for that matter, so check them out. Uh, it's not too soon to register for spring and summer programs. Any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman Guadron, second. second. By Councilman Cochran, all those in favor? Opposed? It is approved. Item 13, authorization with the supervisor to execute any and all documentation to procure credit card processing software known as Paytrax. Any questions? Motion? Second. Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor? Opposed, approved. Uh, next on the agenda are the special events. We've got a couple of runs and a parade. Uh, any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman Cochran. Second by Councilman Guadron, all those in favor? Opposed, approved. Uh, item 15 is an authorization with the supervisor to execute the town's first of three one-year option terms to renew the contract with GovOS Inc. Any questions? Motion? Second. Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second. second. By Councilman Lorenzo, all those in favor? Opposed, approved. The next item are the bid awards. 
Are there any questions? Hearing none, motion. Motion, motion by Councilman Cochran, second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor, opposed, approved. Uh, next item on the agenda, bless you, are the option year resolutions. Any questions? Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor, opposed, approved. Item 18, authorization for the supervisor to enter into professional services agreement with Johnson, Kukata, and Lucchese, engineers, PC. Any questions? Motion by uh, Councilman Cochran, second, second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor, opposed, approved. Uh, next is an authorization for the supervisor to apply for a grant funding from Bloomberg Philanthropies for a public art project. Are there any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman Guadron. Second by Councilman um, O'Connor. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approved. This is a really exciting project. Uh, if we can get the grant funding for it for a public art project, then we're looking at doing it at Ross Park to coincide with the reopening um, and bringing that park back to the community and snatching it from the hands of the drug dealers. Um, item 20, authorization for the supervisor to sign a building permit application submitted by the Bay Club LLC operating as Nikki's on the Bay for a town-owned property located at the Bay Shore Marina. Any questions? Motion? Motion, Motion by Councilman Cochran, second. Aye. By Councilman Lorenzo, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed, approved. 21 uh, is uh, a resolution for board approval to submit a home rule request to the New York State Legislature authorizing the alienation of certain real property in Bayshore. Any questions? Hearing none, motion. Motion, motion by Councilman Guardone, second by Councilman Cochran. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, approved, and that is all of the items on the agenda. So I will then entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Motion by Councilman Guadron, second. Second, second by Councilman O'Connor, all those in favor? Opposed, approved. And thank you very much for, uh, to Carol Charchalis and her department for pulling everything together, the awards and all for black history. Appreciate the effort. We stand adjourned. <laughs>